many pillars of the gaming industry have such weird origins. Devil May Cry was Hideki Kamiya basically losing his mind while trying to make Resident Evil 4 happen. Halo was originally an RTS for the Mac, of all things. Call of Duty used to actually be about war and not Nicki Minaj skins. But the weirdest story of all is how a completely forgotten Jurassic Park tie-in helped to create Sony's biggest rival. No, not themselves. Yep, you heard that right, a failed Jurassic Park game is one of the catalysts that eventually led to the creation of the original Xbox and the Xbox brand as we know it now. Even its creator attributes the creation of the game to being one of the reasons the Xbox was made to begin with. It may not have been the main reason the Xbox was made, that would be so that people could play grabbed by the ghoulies, but it was definitely a pretty dang important factor. The game in question you ask? Jurassic Park Trespasser, an action-adventure game made for PC that is more infamous now for just how kinda strange it is. It featured revolutionary physics far, far ahead of its time that should have made the game a massive hit. Instead, it's viewed as a colossal commercial failure that today is looked back on as being too ambitious, perhaps for its own good. If this is your first time hearing about the madness that is Jurassic Park Trespasser, crack open a fresh old thing of amber, stock up on your margaritas of death, and prepare for the unlikeliest of births. Before that though, we have one free Steam key to give away to one of you lucky viewers for free. All you have to do is subscribe and comment 29k gang down below, and we'll draw a winner next week. Our story begins with the now legendary video game creator and designer Seamus Blackley. Back in 1995, he was known as a coder for Looking Glass Studios, a now defunct video game studio who made bangers like System Shock, Ultima and Thief. Oh Thief, where have you been? Blackley has a degree in physics from Tufts University, a degree that has surprisingly come in handy when it comes to developing games. During his time with Looking Glass Studios, he coded the physics systems of Flight Unlimited and System Shock, and was even the project leader for Flight Unlimited as well. He also worked on Ultima Underworld, the Stygian Abyss. Unfortunately, his time with Looking Glass Studios did not last. In 1995, a new manager arrived who wanted Blackley to make a sequel to Flight Unlimited, one that could compete with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Remember Microsoft, that will be kind of funny a little later on. But Blackley had other things in mind. He wanted to take Flight Unlimited's physics engine and design a combat flight simulator with it. This led to him butting heads with the new manager at Looking Glass, which got him fired. Fortunately for Blackley and the rest of the gaming world, that's not how his story ends. His work with Looking Glass Studios caught the eye of DreamWorks Interactive who hired him to be the executive producer for a game they were already making. It was a video game meant to be the sequel to the 1997 film The Lost World Jurassic Park. You guessed it, that game was Jurassic Park Trespasser. Now, Jurassic Park video games weren't unheard of at the time. Jurassic Park itself, The Chaos Continues and Chaos Island are just a few examples. Even The Lost World itself got a video game adaptation in 1997. That was definitely a video game, allegedly, but Trespasser wasn't going to be like any other Jurassic Park game released to date. Its predecessors were mostly top-down shooters, side-scrollers or point-and-click adventures. With Blackley's vision, Trespasser was going to be a full-on FPS game with a mind-boggling physics engine showcasing his talents. We don't mean Kingsfield mind-boggling either, we mean actually mind-boggling. Blackley was shooting for the stars. So why did Trespasser fail so hard, even though it was from an established IP and had a new physics engine that could revolutionise gaming as we know it? Well, keep in mind that this kind of game had never really been done before. Sure, System Shock is also a first person game with a lot of physics going on, but not to this degree. We're talking about objects accurately reacting to how you hit or touch them players literally controlling their character's hand to pick up or interact with objects, and even firing guns was physics based as well. There were no crosshairs, so you'd have to adjust the position of your hand to shoot where you want to and deal with realistic recoil. 
1998. No other game for the next few years had a physics engine that was anywhere near this ambitious. Deus Ex from Ion Storm, which would curiously pick up some old Looking Glass Studios talent down the line, came out two years after Trespasser. Half-Life 2 is arguably the most impressive example, but that came out six years after Trespasser. Trespasser was always going to be an experimental game with no guarantee of success. Another reason was a fairly rookie team. Several people at the studio had never even had experience developing a game before. Their art director, for example, Terry Izumi, wasn't a video game designer at all, as he designed theme park attractions, namely Tomorrowland. Another team member, George Edwards, animated Disney films, and Disney had barely even begun making 3D films at the time. It didn't help that Trespasser went way, way over budget either. The scope of the game just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and ended up costing way more than expected, meaning that its marketing budget was practically non-existent. Even with all those issues, the number one problem Trespasser's development faced was time. The game was initially set to come out in 1997, but was delayed since it was nowhere near completion by that time. Due to a deal with AMD, DreamWorks told Blackley's team at DreamWorks Interactive that they couldn't extend the release date any more than October 1998. This still wasn't enough time, which led to the team cutting corners to rush out the game in time. Bear in mind, DreamWorks is mostly a movie company. The higher-ups didn't know what it takes to make video games, especially a game that was doing what no other game had done before. As Blackley himself said, the movie guys don't understand. If you just decide a movie is done and show it in a theatre, it can't crash the theatre and kill half the audience and piss them off. I honestly thought it had destroyed my career. To prove that point even further, DreamWorks Interactive, just a year after Trespasser released, published Warpath Jurassic Park, a dinosaur fighting game. Again, a dinosaur fighting game. Imagine a worse Primal Rage. Sorry to do that to you. Anyway, as a result of DreamWorks' dysfunction, several features were removed from Trespasser or left half-baked. Even the game genre shifted from survival horror to action shooter to make things simpler. There's even the infamous breast health bar feature, where a heart tattoo on the main character Anne's breast signified how much health she had left. The devs intended to have that tattoo move to Anne's arm, but the budget and time crunches forced them to leave it on her chest, and so the most ridiculous health bar in a video game of all time was born. Tight deadlines are a common disaster story in games, even today, and it was no different for Jurassic Park Trespasser. The date was October 28th, 1998. Some gamers were excited to get the new Jurassic Park game that was hyped up to revolutionise PC gaming only to be miserably disappointed when they tried it out and saw that the game was just an unfinished buggy mess. It wasn't just the average gamer that hated Trespasser. Most reviewers at the time gave it absolutely scathing reviews. GameSpot even crowned it as the worst game of the year for PC, which feels a little harsh to say the least. Trespasser had potential, and you can see a lot of what they were going for, but potential with poor execution just isn't enough. Some people liked it, sure, but by all means it was a commercial flopper. However, they say people learn from failure, and that's certainly the case with Trespasser. Several devs have admitted that Trespasser had at least some level of influence on some well-known video games. Habitual wallet thief Gabe Newell, for instance, stated that Trespasser's physics were one of the big examples that Valve used when crafting their own physics engine in Half-Life 2. We clearly just need a Trespasser sequel so we will eventually get Half-Life 3. Clearly, even indie developers have taken inspiration from Trespasser over the years. The developers of Surgeon Simulator and Octodad have both said that their physics-based gameplay styles were inspired by the janky, kinda wanky physics of Trespasser. Surprisingly though, inspiring all those great games isn't Jurassic Park Trespasser's biggest legacy. No, the game's greatest ever achievement is setting Seamus Blackley on the path towards making the original Xbox. Seamus Blackley took full responsibility for the downfall of Trespasser, whether or not he truly deserved it. 
He thought that marked the end of his career in gaming, but fortunately he was very wrong. Despite all of Trespasser's many shortcomings, some people saw plenty of potential in the game and the physics behind it. Luckily for Seamus Blackley, one of those people was a little guy called Bill Gates. Bill Gates? Billionaire computer nerd Bill Gates? Blackley and Gates had met during the press events for Trespasser. If it wasn't for a failed Jurassic Park game, the two would likely have never met, and the Xbox probably wouldn't have even been made. At least, not in the way we know it today. Bill Gates helped Blackley land a job at Microsoft in 1999 as program manager for entertainment graphics. Initially, he was tasked to help with Microsoft DirectX, but priorities quickly changed when this little console called the PlayStation 2 came into play. Although the PS2 is now known as just a console, it was envisaged as much more. Apart from running games, it can also play back CD-ROMs and DVDs, which was huge for the time. Sony was even implying that the PS2 was a competitor to the PC and might eventually replace it, which is kinda crazy to think now. Microsoft, feeling threatened, had to come up with an answer, and it was Blackley who came up with that killer idea. He figured that if Microsoft made their own console, they could do it leagues better than Sony, as Microsoft has far more resources and access to the technology of high-end PC parts. His goal was basically to turn the PC into a console. Blackley eventually pitched his idea of the Direct Xbox, terrible name that'll never catch on, to Bill Gates and got it approved. The DirectX team went to work and the smartly renamed Xbox came out in November 2001. It ran on DirectX 8.1, making it easier for developers to port games from PC to Xbox and vice versa. It didn't stop there. The Xbox went on to become a popular line of consoles and one that, for a time, was beating Sony badly in their console war. Blech. The Xbox 360 came out in 2005 and led the way for most of the generation. The Xbox One released in 2013 to about as much enthusiasm as a fart in an elevator deep within the Saharan desert, and the Xbox Series X and S were released in 2020. And yeah, maybe they'll get going sometime soon. If you've been an active gamer sometime within the past two decades, you've probably owned or at least tried playing on an Xbox. You've maybe even held back the Covenant on Reach, cried over human fridges, and grabbed gaming royalty by the ghoulies. And it's all thanks to a broken game about shooting dinosaurs. Not that one. Guys, I cannot in good conscience ever recommend that you eat dried mango before you record something. My mouth is fuller with water than a bloody Evian advert right now. I am literally drowning in my own mouth water. But that was our video on the classic known as Jurassic Park Trespasser. Did you enjoy this video? Be sure to let us know down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, do that as well down below. Oh Christ, I'm really good at that. I've been Jimmy for Cultured Vultures, and thank you for watching.